On the evening of the 1st of March, Friday the 1st of March, last Friday, Rishi Sunak stepped out of number 10 Downing Street and strode over to a podium properly prepared beforehand in order to make a speech before the assembled journalist and television cameras. Now this is, let's be clear about it, this is not a normal occurrence, is it? It's not normal that the Prime Minister would uh, come out and, and, and give a public speech <clears throat> of this character unless you're dealing with a, something very serious, a very serious emergency such as was common during the, po the COVID period where we, we became used to such things. Not anymore. Now what was the emergency that uh, made this uh, dramatic occurrence necessary and, pos and, and possible? And Mr. S Mr. Sunak explained to us that democracy in Britain was in the gravest possible danger. It was subject to a tremendous threat, a really frightening uh, state of affairs. A, a frightening picture was indeed painted by our Prime Minister. What was the context? What was the reason for this threat? Very simply, it was caused by the election of one man in a constituency in the north of England, in Rochdale. The name of the man you all know, of course, it's uh, George Galloway. Now, here's something very strange. You tell me, how does it come about that the election of one man in one constituency can constitute such a grave threat to our democracy? I've always thought in my naivety that uh, when a man is elected by the electorate, that is what I call democracy. And yet, here we have a perfectly democratic result. Nobody's ever questioned this result, in which, by the way, Mr. Sunak's party got a miserable 7%. Galloway got a, a thumping majority. Nobody's questioned this, least of all Sunak himself. Here is the workings of democracy, in my understanding of democracy, and yet this is presented as a threat to democracy. This is uh, the first thing which is uh, somewhat puzzling. Even more puzzling was Sunak's recipe for this attack, this alleged attack on democracy. He says, democracy is under threat. He says, and therefore, therefore, what we, what, we, what we must do is to restrict democracy. To introduce all kinds of restrictions to stop people demonstrating, stop people pro protesting, and so on. Again, as far as I understand, the right to protest and demonstrate are democratic rights which have always been upheld by, by, by this country uh, until now. And yet here we have a Prime Minister publicly advocating the curtailing of democratic rights allegedly to protect democracy. Now, if this is not a completely surreal piece of absolute arrant nonsense, I'm afraid I can't find any other description for it. But there we are, that's what was, was presented. And frankly, what this showed very clearly to, to me and to millions of other people, is only one thing, it's panic. Yes, absolute panic. Mr. Sunak is, is in a state of blue panic, along with the rest of his class, the pool of the political class, the whole of the establishment, the whole of the media, both the Conservatives and the Labour and the Liberals, they're all in a state of panic because of the election of one man. Now, this is somewhat absurd, one might think, but no, not so. It's, it's, it's rather got some serious consequences, some serious explanations are required, and I will endeavour to, 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 to tell you what they are. What's the reason for this, why the ruling class is in such a panic over these developments? Now, if you think about it, I said the freedom of speech, freedom of expression are democratic rights, but they have in effect been severely curtailed for quite some time now, as a matter of fact. You see, there is a kind of stifling regime of censorship and self-censorship whereby certain subjects are taboo. Certain things are not to be mentioned in public. That goes particularly, for example, for the Ukraine. I ask you a simple question. When was the Ukraine ever seriously debated in the British Parliament as to what position Britain ought to take in relation to that question? It was never. It never took place. What about, above all, the question of Gaza, which is the issue which Mr. Galloway has been uh, pressing? When was Gaza seriously discussed? And the position of our disgraceful, disgusting, abominable support for the massacre of innocent people, men, women and children, 
30 or 38,000 is the latest figure which uh, I have uh, I've, I've seen. Goodness knows how many people are buried under the rubble. Men, women, and children. Now, don't tell me that they're all Hamas fighters because that's just absur an absurdity which nobody except the baby uh, Mr. Sunak believes in. Now, this is n never discussed. And if you attempt to discuss it, if you attempt to protest, you automatically come under the accusation of things like anti-Semitism, for example. Now, let's examine this accusation. Anti-Semitism, it goes without saying, is an absolutely vile thing which no serious socialist or democrat or communist like myself could ever support. Anti-Semitism is one thing. Criticism and condemnation of the state of Israel and its criminal activities in Gaza and the Middle East is an entirely separate question. And yet these two questions are conflated. They're mixed up. And nobody questions this. Not a single person. Not even the so-called left in Parliament. Whatever <laughs> might remain of that left. Even someone like uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn has been conspicuous by his absence. As far as an open and, and active and public condemnation of these abominations. And yet precisely protests against these things is what Sunak wishes to criminalize under the entirely absurd and bogus accusation of defending democracy. Now you see, democracy is under attack. It is. It's been under attack all the time. Not from the protesters for protesting against the terrible atrocities committed by Israel with our active support and the Americans' active support in Gaza, but in many other fronts also. The press is muzzled. The so-called freedom of the press has become an absolute uh, fiction. Nobody can really believe what the press says about any serious subject in this day and age. That's a threat to democracy. Oh, yes. The repeated actions to restrict the right of trade unions and the right to strike, those are attacks. Those are, that's a threat to democracy. And above all now, the threat to the, the, the right to demonstrate is a threat to democracy. So where do we stand on this issue? Well, as a, a Marxist, as a communist, which I am, of course, I, I support democratic rights. I defend democratic rights against the attack which is co constantly being made by the right wing, not by the left wing, by the right wing, and by people like Mr. Sunak and his, his government of gangsters, crooks and thieves, because that's what they are. And of course, you see, there, there's this conspiracy of silence which has been imposed which means that nobody is allowed to speak on these things. The difference is this. George Galloway, and by the way, you can say what you like about George Galloway. I don't necessarily agree with everything that the man says or, or does. That's a, it's a separate question. But that's not the reason why he's being attacked. He's not being attacked by anything he might have said or done in the past. He's being attacked for entirely different reasons. And what an attack. One individual. And the entire establishment has united, not just the Tories, but the Labour, the Labour Party, which under Mr. Starmer is very little different now from the Conservative Party, as far as I can make out. They've all united in a furious, furious, quite vicious attack, personal attack even, against this one man. And they seem to be quite petrified by his influence. Now, they're not wrong, by the way. You can say what you like about George Galloway, but he's a tough customer. And he's not afraid to speak his mind. You can agree with him or you can disagree with him, but he speaks his mind and he's got every right to speak his mind on any subject that he wishes. Now, in Parliament, by the way, they will try to silence him. They're doing, the, they're doing that already. They've tried to shut him up, but they won't succeed. Knowing George Gallagher, they won't succeed. He, he will make it his business to stand up and raise questions which are not supposed to be raised, these taboo questions. For example, why the hell are we supporting America consistently all the time on every single question of foreign policy? Why are we continuing, continuing to support the, the regime in the Ukraine? Why are we risking war with Russia for no good reason that I can ascertain? Why, uh, above all, are we deliberately, consistently supporting Israel? And it's no good saying to me, oh no, but now we're advocating aid should be sent. What are you talking about? So aid should be sent. There should be a temporary ceasefire, so-called, which, which the Israelis have not yet agreed to, by the way, for six weeks, I think it is, after which you can continue to bomb and murder and slaughter and kill and destroy to your heart's content, as long as this uh, temporary uh, so-called ceasefire and some, some miserable amounts of aid are, are, are allowed through. This is pure hypocrisy. 
This is the most disgusting and abominable hypocrisy, particularly from the Americans, also from the British. Who've, this country has been reduced to a, a mere uh, marionette, a mere uh, ventriloquist dummy of American imperialism on all questions, starting with the Middle East. But these, this, this, these issues must be raised, and they will be raised now by George Galloway. I think that's partly why they've taken this position now of partially distancing themselves publicly from Israel. Why? Not because of one man. Not at all. It's because these ideas are, 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 are held by millions of people in this country. I'll go further. These ideas are held by the overwhelming majority of honest people in Britain. Okay? Not by one man at all. But George Galloway certainly will be in a position for the first time, for the first and only time, that these ideas will somehow found, find an expression in the House of Commons itself, and it will be very difficult to silence him. You can t try what you like with George Galloway. You will silence the man. He will speak up on issues which you're not supposed to speak on, which nobody else is speaking on, which is an absolute abomination. What has that got in common with democracy, where we are constantly muzzled and preventing from expressing any kind of opinion which somehow runs counter to the official policy in relation to Israel and, and Palestine. It is a complete abomination, and it's something which the Labour movement as a whole should completely and absolutely oppose. As far as George Galloway is concerned, well, as I say, I don't necessarily agree with all his views. That's beside the point, entirely beside the point. As far as the vicious attacks by the ruling class are concerned, we stand full square behind him, and we wish him every luck and every success in his attempt to, to raise these, these disputed issues, these controversial issues, on the floor of the House of Commons. Otherwise, what's the House of, of Commons supposed to be for? And therefore, in the name of a, a defence of genuine democracy, of a, a defending democratic rights, and of upholding a, a genuine internationalist policy against the terrible slaughter, the, the inhuman barbarism which has been inflicted by, by Israel with our support in our name which is a criminal thing then of course we stand entirely for George Galloway against the ruling class against Starmer and the other hypocrites and the other renegades that uh, defend the capitalist system and imperialism and have nothing whatsoever to do either with socialism with progress with internationalism humanity or democracy just one final word on this subject. I speak here, of course, as a communist, and as a Marxist, which I've been for the whole of my life, and I can say this, that the best defenders, the only true defenders of the interests of the working class and of democracy and of humanity are precisely the communists. And I would point out to you that on the 10th of June of this year, there will be a very important event. It will be the founding conference of the Revolutionary Communist International, which will take place, I believe, in Italy. And I take this opportunity to invite all of you, all communists, socialists, Labour Party members, Labour movement supporters, and true Democrats, to please give us full support and to help us in this initiative, which is the true vanguard of the world international struggle for socialism and democracy.